April 11th, 2020. It was supposed to be like any other day. We were just going to go into the woods and just enjoy our last few days of spring break. Like we always did. We just wanted to have a bit of fun in the woods, like always, and we'd get home for dinner. No worries. That was how our few remaining days of vacation were supposed to go. But they didn't. I realize I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now it's 1.30 at night, and I'm currently the only one who's awake in the house and writing this out in my journal while Fiona rests next to me. I should probably start at the beginning. It was around 3 p.m., and my friends and I had been enjoying our spring vacation by spending time in the woods near our houses, as well as walking around town of Portland, Oregon, and just enjoying what Oregon had to give us. That year was when my parents bought me my first puppy. Fiona was only a month or two old, but I really wanted to bring her with me while I went out and spent the day with my friends. It was around 2.45 in the afternoon when I called up Nixon to ask if he wanted to go and hang out with everyone. Yo. Hey Nix, I was just calling to see if you and the others wanted to hang out. Nixon and I had been best friends since we were newborns. Amber, Chris, Jessica, and Katie were friends I met in high school, and we had been pretty close ever since. I still remember hearing that gravelly voice of Nixon on the other line, since he would often end up sleeping in pretty late whenever we had days off of school. Sure. I'll call Chris and we'll head over to your house. Sounds good. I got a little something to show you guys when you all come over. See you in a bit. I really wish we had gone and did something different that day. I really wish that I had the chance to say I love you to my parents and my aunt one last time. It was around 3 o'clock when I could hear Amber outside my front door, gently knocking. Ray, come on! What's taking you so long? Not wasting a second, I grabbed my long, dark purple cloak that my aunt bought me for my birthday and gently scooped up my puppy before sliding down the banister and hopping down the stairs. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Bye, Aunt Amanda. Hearing my mom and my aunt call back from the kitchen and my dad from outside in the backyard, I bolted out the door, nearly into Amber and Jessica. Whoa there, Speedy Gonzalez! Feeling Jessica's gentle yet stabilizing grip on my arm, I felt my face flush in embarrassment. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think you two would be that close to the door. Well, I'll just be glad that I caught you before you could run us both over. Come on, the others are waiting for us. Walking alongside Jessica and Amber, I could see Nixon, Chris, and Katie waiting for us while in conversation before they all looked at me. Looks like we're all here. Let's go. Our normal hangout spot was the woods across the road from our houses. At first, it was just me and Nixon. We would spend almost all day coming up with our own games or climbing trees when we were kids. But then, our little duo grew into a group of six. Springs in Oregon weren't that bad. There were some days where it was pretty chilly, but the weather tended to vary from time to time. And that day in particular, the weather was pretty crisp and clung to our bodies like a frozen hug. So, are you going to show us what you got hiding underneath your cloak, Ray? Totally forgetting that I brought my pup with me, I gently moved the dark purple fabric of my long cloak from my body and showed my tiny husky puppy, Fiona, to everyone. Aww, she's so small. It's a girl, right? Yeah, it's a girl. Her name is Fiona. Mom and Dad got her for me last Saturday. How old is she? Two months. Keeping Fiona close to my body to keep her warm, I noticed that the woods around us looked a bit thick and slightly foggy. 
Normally, this neck of the woods wasn't foggy unless we had rain earlier that morning. But that day, there wasn't any rain. Already, this was giving me weird vibes. Um, guys? What's that? Looking over to where Katie was pointing to, we all noticed that underneath one of the trees a few feet from us was a book. A book underneath a tree? Not very suspicious. That's what I was thinking at first. Gently asking Jessica to hold on to Fiona before handing her over, I walked over and picked up the book. It looked in good condition from what I could see. The book had a hard purple cover held together by some kind of leather. There was a silver moon engraved in the middle, but underneath it was a red eye of sorts. And to be honest, it gave me chills just sharing eye contact with it. Who would leave a book like this in the woods? Maybe the owner of the book went to get something and they forgot here. That can't be right. It looks like this book's been here for a while. But how come we never noticed it? We've been in those woods so many times, and not once did we see that book. Well, let's see what's inside. The book automatically flipped open as pages rapidly passed before my eyes before stopping on one page. From the text on the page, as well as the picture of someone being resurrected, this wasn't any ordinary book. It was a spell book of some kind. Opening that book was one of the biggest mistakes of our lives. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. Seeing Nixon get a gentle jab of the elbow from Jessica, Chris and Jessica began to tease him, calling him a chicken before he gave him that cold stare that often startled all of us. Come on, what could it hurt? It's just some dusty old book. Even though the others were on board with this, I was starting to get this feeling that this wasn't such a good idea, but I was the only one who could read the language it was in. My aunt had been teaching me to read Braille and Eldritch when I was little, and over that spring break she was teaching me Latin. Now I really wish that I was back home, studying more Latin with her while curled up on the couch. <clears throat> From across the veil of death. I request your presence, so that I can arise once more, enter into that I might see the Owl Witch of the Forest. All of a sudden, the trees grew taller and thicker, there was a giant gust of wind, and the fog around us swirled into a giant tornado in front of us, turning black. And that was when we met her. She had to have been a good eight to nine feet tall. A black embroidered cloak covered her from head to toe. I still have nightmares of those blood-red glowing eyes of hers. And that horrible, wicked smile of hers. And that voice of hers. Hello, children. <laughs> Mother Owl made our lives a living hell for the next two years. Two years! She kept us as prisoners. We'd managed to escape a few months back, but we're broken, scarred, terrified. To this day, she haunts us. <laughs> I'll never be free from her. We never should have gone into the woods that day. We never should have touched that stupid spell book. Now my friends and I are stuck with this damn curse she's placed upon us. We should have just stayed home that day. 